world was a changing place as YouTube was taken on by a heavy storm. A new show had made its presence known, and there was no going back. The Drunken Peasants podcast, starring Ben and TJ, had been on for several months now, making many friends and terrible enemies. A week-long break wouldn't stop the destruction that was coming to the internet, and here the podcast would begin to really take form that would last for years to come. Drunken Peasants returned on October 10th on episode 44 with a brand new spankin' intro, now featuring video, created by Dave Creator. During this episode, a video was played of a Google Hangout between many YouTube Christians, including G-Man and Venomfang X, an old YouTuber who possibly may be suffering from multiple personality disorder. There's a problem. Do you guys want to see a magic trick? I'm going to make an atheist disappear. I thought maybe I could make a video explaining what's going on with me. Starting tonight, people will see that Thunderfoot is a joke. I'm a man of my word. <laughs> and was stated to be the training ground for new atheists on YouTube, as his arguments were very easily defeated. On the next episode, Venom Fang X finally debated the amazing atheist, but at any moment the debate could come to an end if TJ didn't watch his terrible fucking potty mouth. Oh, shit, excuse me. Sorry for swearing. Sorry about that, you cunts. You wanted to have a debate with no profanity because you wanted to be family friendly for the little kitties to watch. Uh, like, yes, and I, I still would desire that. I know you would, but you're not fucking gonna get it. Um, oh, well, then, then I'm going to have to leave, unfortunately. No, I, I don't leave, Venom to... Fang. You, you weren't aware, aware that we were going to curse on the show? No, I've never watched your show before. Aw, well, that's too bad. Um, I, well, you, I saw you guys were talking about... If, if uh, I can request? Yeah. Yeah. What well, you request? I, I just request that profanity be kept to, you know... All right, all right, all right. Minimum all right, all right, all right. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll try, I'll try. I mean, I'm a, I I'm, a, a, I'm a foul mouth guy, but you know what? If it's that important to you, I know we want to have you on the show here, so I'll try to contain myself. Wow. Um, it was during this episode Ben's face would make a sneak peek. The debate was highly unremarkable, as again, Venom had terrible arguments. But it would appear the vigilant Christian Mario had been forever changed by seeing this event. On episode 51, he would make a video apologizing for his claims of getting more pussy than the peasants, and scaring virgins like Ben. The Vigilant Christian. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Exposing evil and preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. Member of the CTN Christian hey, Truth Mario. Network. Hey, Mario, and you're here for a special video today. I just wanted to make a video to apologize to TJ, the amazing atheist here on YouTube, because your I made apology this video, is not accepted, Vigilant Christian bitch. responds to the not so Fuck amazing yours. sheeple atheist and destroys him. And really, that's not how I want to present myself on YouTube. I was probably reacting yeah. emotionally, and I was upset because I don't want to insult people. I just want to talk my like crazy in bullshit this way before. So you know, I didn't respond well. So right. this video will be taken down. My apologies for the way that I dealt with the situation. So okay, uh, there you have it. Now, TJ, if you're listening, I also I noticed listening. that uh, you and Venomfang X, uh, another YouTuber, have had your back and forth on YouTube in the kind of same way me and you have gone back and forth. Okay. And uh, I saw you do a show, a podcast together, or whatever, a drunken peasants 
show. Mm-hmm. And um, it was pretty respectful. I mean, yeah. the dialogue was good. I think that uh, really that's what we should be doing here on YouTube is uh, opening up opportunities between you know people who have different worldviews so that we can discuss well, that is some true. issues and, and some disagreements. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yep. if we were to talk about uh, certain things like keeping the swearing down and, and things like you did with him, I would consider coming on your show and discussing what I know is pretty out there views. Um, but so he, he, he admits that his views are right. quote unquote out there. Yeah, well, I mean, there's no way to deny that. Ben would reach out and talk with the vigilant Christian about finding a time to get him on the show. It couldn't take that long to get him on the show, could it? In the meantime, at least, there were a lot of stupid ads to hold us over, which started on episode 46. The peasants would continue to psychoanalyze the crazies of the internet, and the amount of crazies introduced during this time is a major defining aspect of the era of classical peasantism. The audience would eat this up, and each crazy person had something unique to bring to the dinner table. To provide musical entertainment, free press media would be introduced in episode 55, more often known as the Why Be an Atheist Guy. The video that someone sent to us. Dead Penguin, that's another one. Someone sent us this video, and, you know, I I don't really know what we can say about it, but I think it'll be good for a laugh. All right. All right. We'll just laugh at so, it. Then. So there's two of them. We, we can even sing along. I, I think that... Sing along, huh? You know, there's a lot of inside jokes and interesting things that, you know, the, the viewers have gotten into that we've played over the last year or so. So uh, this this I think this should be a new one here. Here we go. Great song. Why be an atheist? Why be an atheist? Why be an atheist when the freaking <laughs> awesome fades? You could be deist. You could be Unitarian. You could be Quaker. You could be Taoist. <laughs> I like how he's making all these suggestions. Like, it's okay, you know, you could... Anything but an atheist. Right. Why be an atheist? I like Why be an too. atheist? Episode 61 brought what every fan wanted, advice for their sex life from Alexis Taylor on the show Vagina Power, a strange talk show with some of the most quotable moments of this era, and sometimes a co-host that gave the strangest looks to Alexis, making this character extremely relatable to the viewer. But it's not a problem, though. She said the dick was so good mm-hmm. that as she started rocking, she just got into it, and all of a sudden, she said something just hit her. Bam! All upside his head. Just slap the dick will make you slap somebody. <laughs> <laughs> That's the moral of the story. Dick will make you slap somebody. <laughs> Whatever you can scrounge up, I guess they got a little basket in their pocket or something, but they holding up with a sign saying that they will suck a dick up until they hiccup. <laughs> she said suck a dick up until they hiccup. This boy told me to tell y'all, y'all need to wash under y'all damn nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Orgasms on Earth would never be the same with the knowledge Alexis would bring to human society. On episode 65, a new game was formed known as Troll or Not a Troll, one of the fan favorite segments that has stuck around with the show throughout its run. Do you think this guy's a troll? Uh, I don't care. Is your troll dar on? I don't even care one way or the other if he is. I don't really. I I just think it's fun to speculate. You know. Um, I'm gonna vote. I'm kind of on the fence right now. Let's let's give it more time. Okay. I might have a better sense by the time it's over. All right. It was not an official segment until episode 88. Thanks for being on the show. We're gonna play a game right now, and everyone that's watching can play. Uh, this is troll or not a troll. Troll or not, not a, a troll. troll. We we do need a theme song for that. Someone work that out. Audience, this is where you shine. Someone make the troll or not, not a time troll song. To shine. It goes kind of like this. Troll or not a troll. And the intro would be added in the next episode. Troll or not a troll. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Let's watch it one more time. No. All right. Is it time for that? Yes. Is it time? It's time for... It's time! (laughs) 
play it one more time. All right. Oh, come on. The only outcome for the game was the declaration of someone being a troll, not a troll, or the best outcome, a tie. Evanism wasn't the only new religion to be brought to the drunken peasants through the examination of crazy people, as on episode 67, the Church of Gale would finally enter orbit of the Peasants' Mead Station, commanded by Gale Cord Schuler. Here, the peasants would discuss Gale's fight against the Jesuit order. So let me know if... If at any point this makes sense to you, what this woman is about to say. Wow. Okay. That's, a, that's quite an introduction, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you got me curious. I'm fascinated now. Okay, folks, let me just sum up. Uh, I Skyped with Terrence Jenkins last night. I finally heard from him after a silence of one and a half months. Around June the 21st, when, uh, Skype, when Terrence was Skyping with me, uh, Brent Spiner said, Hey, you who, Terrence, Whoa. uh... Yeah, yeah, she's hanging out with Data from Star Trek, ironically enough. <laughs> oh, Brent okay. Spiner. Wow, yep. so that's, is that what made you think of this when I referenced that? I, I mean, I, I had it next in, in the order. So here. it was just, it was a it was, coincidence. It, it was magic. Yep. No, no, it was not, I don't believe in coincidence, I think it was Jesus. Oh. This is divine planning, Ben. Okay, so. How can you deny the touch of Christ? This is when her story gets a little more bizarre. No, it's it's fine. She's Something's right. Something's going on with Matthew McConaughey's penis. And what was happening? Right. Was all of my hands <laughs> <and penises. laughs> Bre Brent Spiner <laughs> told her that something's going on with Matthew McConaughey's penis. No, so was Brent Spiner in, what? In real life, like Spiner so Brent was like, Spiner I was. Call someone. I just found out some big news. <laughs> Who do I call? Uh, uh, the lady with the weird hookah shell necklace. I'll call her. And then she picks up, and she's like, hey, Brent Spiner, I really liked you as data. And he's like, shut up, whore. Listen, I have news. Something's like, wrong with I'm Matthew really McConaughey's Brent dick. Spiner, we're friends. And then Brent Spiner says, something wrong with Matthew McConaughey's dick. And she's like, what? And then we'll find out. Gail would be covered for many episodes to come. Between her talking about fighting off the Jesuits and their leader, Zack Knight, her forbidden love with Brent Spiner, and authoring many books. Gail is quite the ladies' man, wooing men like Brent Spiner, Vladimir Putin, David Hasselhoff, Terrance Jenkins, Waldo, and many more. The peasants would learn that Gail considered them Jesuits and would not deal with them. Thus, the peasants gave up hope on ever getting her on the show. Old antagonists would still appear on the peasants. G-Man wasn't done with his debates. After being shut down on the dusty G-Man debate, G-Man felt it was time to take on a scientist by the name of jean Frank Swage. Um, some Canadian piece of shit. Or JF. Okay. So, so uh, we, uh, we have our other guest here, G-Man. I'll introduce you to him. Uh, his name is JF. Those are, those are his initials. JF. Can you hear that over the nuclear generator that you're sitting next to? <laughs> I don't have any, you know, it's probably my laptop, maybe my fan is being too okay. loud or something, I don't know. But okay. my name is okay. JF, I can see him, uh, it says, I, I see his whole name here. Hi, Jamin. JF, okay, cool. How are you doing, nice sir? Nice to see you. I'm doing all fine, right. what about you? I'm doing all right, just got home from work uh, a couple hours ago. Mm -hmm. Got so invited to have a debate with the scientist, I'm waiting for the scientist to get here. It's not a <laughs> <laughs> It's not a debate, G-Man. We just, no, no, we, no, no, it's not Thunderfoot. No, no, see, it's, no. it's not a, we didn't say we're bringing a celebrity on. We said we're bringing a scientist on. Oh, but, okay. No, no, and actually it's not, we're not, he's not here to debate you. We just thought you could use some education. Right. Oh, okay, cool. I, I, I love education. I have no problem with it. This man with a very seductive voice smooth talked his way through the debate. Though, as we all know, G-Man, of course, won the debate, as he always did. There was no stopping the chocolate atheist. Episode 77 would introduce the beast, the sexiest man alive that all of the women spread their legs for. Or at least that's what he would wish. Uh, this video is entitled The Problem with Girls and What They Should Do. Finally. A definitive solution. Listen up, ladies. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Joseph 82, 76 here. Awesome. You want a rant from the beast? The beast? Wait, wait, TJ. You'll you'll learn a thing or two. The beast. You might learn a thing or two. The beast, and then, TJ. And then you know, 
in the future when someone's like TJ, how, you know, <laughs> who are your influences when you make your videos? You can the say beast. the beast, the beast. Yes. Look at him. Look at that face. He's a beast. Look at that intensity. Yeah, yeah. he's a beast. You know, am I looking at a UFC fighter beast. right now? Is that what's going on? <laughs> this is the beast. The beast. Joseph, 276. The, the beast. beast. Yeah. yeah. Right, boys, I'm back. The beast is fucking back. Yeah. yeah. The beast. The beast. You're damn right. <laughs> Fuck yeah. The beast is in the house. Motherfucking Today, beast! This rant. Lay it down! Dude, he has a hippie peace symbol. Now, my friend, He's Scott the beast. Williams, Scotty. I oh! <laughs> oh! He made a status on Facebook here. Why? Why? And, um. <laughs> I just want to read it off. No affiliation with me. Bit by bit, and I'll give you the best part. Shit by shit. You girls want to find a good guy. Yeah. First thing you should do, stop being so goddamn picky. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, this yeah, is so he, transparent. He, lead it, he leads in with that this one. Is, Don't is, be picky. Don't. Is, I wonder why he has that. <laughs> yeah, that I wonder standard. why he's saying that. <laughs> New jokes came out during this spring of crazy people, such as mid-90s Kevin Nash. <clears throat> when he, dude, he needs to jerk off to something. I know. <laughs> God. You know, I mean, he looks like he doesn't have a very good computer or camera, so that's all he can afford. I mean, don't don't be hard down on this guy just because he has, you know... Oh, yeah. He has to put his jerk-off material Mid on the wall. Mid-90s Kevin Nash. That's what gets me off. <laughs> Mid-90s well, Kevin Nash. Well, dude, it's really convenient. Nash. It's really convenient, though, because it, it's, it's, it's like taped to the wall, so it doesn't have to actually, like, clip the page. It, 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 <laughs> mid 90s Kevin Nash. And in his room, he has the latest the, meme. He has all the old wrestlers, so he can just, he can just go in a circle. Everyone has embraced it. It's re, it's on. already it's <laughs> already taken the internet over. I swear, mid 90s Kevin Nash. Do it, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Now again? full screen, so they can make a meme out of it. All right. All right. <laughs> mid 90s Kevin Nash. Man. Uh. Mid 90s Kevin Nash. <laughs> all right. Mid-90s Kevin Nash, ladies and gentlemen. My most popular bit that I did in my famous sitcom, uh, Fat, White, and Single. Ben loved Kevin Nash so much that he had a sign at a wrestling event for it. Even the laziest Peasants fans would get a great workout for their wrists on episode 85, when porn star Mercedes Carrera guest starred. She came on the show to talk a lot against feminism, something that pissed off SJWs like Ryan Whiney, who once again refused to come on the show with Mercedes, but instead stuck to shouting back at her from his Twitter account. Episode 88 had a new eccentric crazy person show up called G-Time Johnny, someone who would run around outside naked on camera, though for some reason most people would probably prefer seeing that from Mercedes. Couldn't tell you why, but it's probably sexism. Johnny had the world figured out and would argue for people to give up on recorded history and language and returning man to his natural existence in nature. He constantly enjoys life and is one of the happiest men alive as he is always smiling and singing in his videos. I don't, There's some zen shit to this. I don't think this next guy is a troll, but th this video made me laugh because this guy seems pretty, pretty crazy. Play it. Hi, I'm G Time Johnny. You seem pretty sane to me, dude. In the cycle, we're no longer going to live a technological generated fantasy. If you think from 2014, okay. the recorded language. <laughs> what is with crazy people singing now? Because first we had the Why Be an Atheist guy, yeah. and now we have this guy. Why are there people who feel like life needs to be a fucking musical? At least he's happy. Yeah. He's very happy. You know, the other guy, he seems kind of miserable. This guy just seems like, you know, I'm a crazy guy in the woods with a beard. Well, he's just happy, so he has to sing everything yeah. he wants to continue. I don't fucking give a shit about <laughs> anything. In your ears, it needs us to exist. And you're from Earth. You're from not from 2014. You are not a Catholic time terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> you are not a Catholic time terrorist. Maybe I am. Many do not understand the concept of G-time or other things this man says. But perhaps if we did, we could all be a little happier. TJ, 
Have no. you ever won? Oh, no, Ben. No. You're a piece of shit. Okay. Have I ever wondered what, Ben? What it would be like in an alternate reality where our show was like just terrible? You know, it's it's kind of hard. It would be kind of hard to imagine, but we don't even have to go as far as an alternate reality, Ben. We don't. No. No. All we have to do is watch the uh, inebriated discussion podcast. <laughs> Which is not, look, it's not a ripoff of our show at all, guys. Let's be honest with ourselves. The random discussions of the inebriated variety hosted by the unfunny comedian would begin to air, clearly ripping off the drunken peasants format, and even covering practically the same videos as DP. Episode 92, the peasants covered the random discussions complaining about comments Mr. Repsion made about them. The unfunny comedian would defend his show, saying he did not steal the idea from the peasants. But later he would admit the opposite in interviews. How's the uh, random inebriated discussion show going? I'd say better than it was. Better than it was. Well, that's, I mean, like, it would almost that's pretty low be, standard. Right? Yeah, <laughs> but that's good. I'm glad to hear it's That's improved. like the shit smelled better on day three than it did on day two. <laughs> Not quite as strong. Not, not as many flies today. <coughs> so why'd you jack our shit, brah? <laughs> why not? That's a fair enough answer. Yeah. I can't really argue with that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, the logic's impeccable. I'm not. You got served, TJ. Yeah. You got I didn't expect served. you to be so easily defeated. TJ. Yeah, you got fucking served, dude. Well, I didn't. I thought he was gonna have some kind of lame. This guy is gonna fucking kick your ass, well, TJ. He did. He did at first, but I think now he's, he's getting more savvy. Now he's just like, yeah, I did it. Before he's like, no, no, I, I came well, up with this idea. I was. I never said that I came up with the idea. But I was. I was trying to save face at first. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have a good enough face to save, bitch. The only noteworthy thing about random discussions would come long after the end of classical peasantism, when on episode 210, a fight broke out between Unfunny and some lover on the stream, leading to the Bitch Boy Slap Fight song. Bitch Boy Slap Fight Gotta oh ask my mama if you can stay over tonight <laughs> Bitch Boy Slap Fight We're both painfully tasty and wild <laughs> Finally, on March 27, 2015, just a little over a year after the start of the Drunken Peasants podcast, episode 100 was aired. Welcome to the Drunken Peasants Podcast 100th episode spectacular. I'm Lance Sloan, joined here by Ryan Sloan, my brother, and Ben Sloan, my co-host. It's great to be here, guys. Yes, yes. This no is relation to Ben. It was a big event, being the second longest DB show at the time, since the Dusty vs. G-Man debate, featuring many guests that joined for parts of the show. Dusty would debate G-Man again, and his friend, Rancam. A madman out of a cartoon. 
Can Bionic. you say that Bionic. again? In the X community? That's for, that's for sure. She's a cult all by herself. And what? The it's Dusty. Dusty. Dusty, you see this, bro? Jesus, really. bro. Yeah, come on, man. You need a little Jesus in your brother. What does it say? Oh, it okay. said, look at, look at, man. <laughs> I don't want any Jesus in me at all. No, thank you. I'm just oh, not come on, man. Honestly, are you are you sure? Need Jesus inside you, Dusty. It you feels need Jesus good, deep Dusty. inside uh, you. Other popular atheists also appeared, along with show fans like a talking fish called Fishhead. Fishhead, Fishhead. <laughs> he has a fish head. Eat them up, yum. Fuck you, Fishhead. Yeah, fuck you, man. Who even likes you, buddy? Well, then I'll, I'll see where we stand. <laughs> Who the hey, hey? I asked you a fucking question, piece of shit. Who likes you? I said. Who fucking oh. likes you? Do you like me, TJ? No. <laughs> no one likes me. Good. That's how it should be. No one likes TJ no, either. So. Yeah, yeah. You guys will get on fuck. In reality, nobody likes TJ. Who cares? So. I don't give a fuck if you like me. I don't need to be validated by you insects. <laughs> Insect? Did you say insects? Insects. Insects. Did I you say, say incest? Paul is on my level, but you two are garbage. Ouch. I know. What the fuck? Paul's like, I'm insulted. You, I'm way above you. No, I'm, no, I'm no. far. It, I wouldn't be called Paul's ego if I wasn't far <laughs> above everyone. And JF returned. TJ also danced to a song that was a remix from a clip from an earlier DP episode. TJ fucked a banana. In reference to the time TJ had a video leaked of him putting a banana in his anal hole. Gotti, you're a piece of he shit. He only deserves Here, shit and piss. We'll we'll play this and and TJ can dance right. to it. I'll put him okay, on full TJ, screen. Okay, TJ, you can dance, buddy. All right, cool. Okay, uh, and I'll I'll put him on the screen so Dusty can see him. Okay, All right, there we it. go. So now Dusty can see you. <laughs> All right, here we go. TJ, 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 TJ. I love to go dance with TJ. TJ fucked a banana. I was just bouncing around. Oh, this is so bad. <laughs> Whitest guy ever confirmed. Awesome. That was awesome. No, that was badass. You killed it. No, I think I did a good job. Yeah. Fuck you guys. Yeah, I did it all. I'm great. Banana. I'm awesome. Fuck. What's going on, Ben? I don't know. Banana. Banana. Fuck! Okay. Sadly, many guests were hit with DDoS attacks during this episode. This wouldn't stop this episode, and it was a big success in the end, and the show would continue to charge forward. A new guest would appear on episode 103, the legendary artist... James Asserton, or Jim Ass, who allegedly paid $10,000 to come on the show. Might as well talk about it here. God, God damn it. Jim paid us $10,000 to be on the show. I thought you guys respected the iTunes listeners better no, than the whole YouTube No, we don't listener. respect anyone. <laughs> That's where he got it wrong. This episode featured tons of Hey Scotties, since Scotty was not around. You're fucking hey, suck! Coming for you, nigga! <laughs> <laughs> da, na, 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 na. Not much is known about Jim Ass, as he still hasn't appeared on camera for Drunken Peasants. He's a very popular guest who claimed the vigilant Christian runs the Illuminati, would appear throughout the run of the Drunken Peasants, and he'd have many great contributions to society and the show, all of which are a story for another day. The peasants being the misogynists they are, of course, had heard of a famous feminist and probably the kindest, most intelligent woman ever, Anita Sarkeesian. She ran a controversial YouTube channel targeting sexist video games, pissing off children who didn't like her factually backed critiques of sexism in video games. Ben was attending a gaming event on April 12th, 2015, somewhere in Columbus. The ex-commie pig would claim to just happen to run into Anita. However, many see through this and accused him for stalking Anita. For the case of this coverage though, let us assume Ben was telling the truth. Ben, shocked by seeing Anita, this woman they covered on the show for having such different ideas, believed no one would believe him if he said he had run into Anita. 
He then proceeded to take a selfie with Anita in the background and posted it on Facebook and Twitter. Women's rights activists, mislabeled as SJWs, rightly called out Ben for raping Anita. Anita shared Ben's photo saying how violated she felt, and thus this led to Anita Gate. May 2015, the peasants would give the middle finger to America and leave for a vacation in Europe, traveling to places like London, Brussels, Amsterdam, Paris, Nice, and Rome. During this time, there were no episodes aired, but several videos were posted of the peasants' adventure. Yeah, as, yeah. as if to say to the uh, king, well, peasants were just shit in the street, but if you were a king, you had one of these, and that's as if to say, please stop shitting at me. Because that would oh, amuse the king, you know. He's mad. He's angry because he's full of shit. And he doesn't <laughs> want to be. You know, but, uh, and then you just, when you were done, you tossed it out the window onto some peasants' heads. Oh. And uh, the peasants weren't too happy either. No, I would, I would imagine not. But no, uh, you know, but that, that was pretty much how royalty lived back in the uh, 1920s, uh, I believe. 20s? Yeah. These are from the 20s. <laughs> okay. Many stories were told of this trip, and apparently a drunk TJ even pissed off a Scotsman. The peasants met up with fans in London and Amsterdam. These would be the first meetups the peasants would have with their fans, leading to many more back in America across the country that fans would enjoy. Once drunken peasants returned from Europe, the man, G-Time Johnny, came on the Drunken Peasants as a guest on episode 116. Is it happening? It's not mm. happening. Yes, G-Time Johnny is here. He's Hi. here. Hi, G-Time Johnny. Hey, let me throw this. The internet was tired of being owned by G-Man's raps, and a storm was brewing in the dark web. Furballs would fly, as creationist Cat would challenge G-Man to a rap battle, which was held on episode 121 in which four rounds were given to the challengers with different themes. Round one was on Jesus, with Creationist Cat winning. Round two was on Evolution, which CC also won. Round three was on who was the best rapper, which the cat won. And the last round was a diss round. Okay, here we go. Yo, yo, yo. She made stupidest motherfucker in the world, yo. Yeah, you and me, G-Man, we could have killed the AIDS, but instead, I'm going to have to kill you lyrically. What's wrong, G-Man? Why you look so cunty? Because you got your ass served by Matt in the hunting. I posed Matt and made him look like shit, but he made you look like an idiot. You make fun of me because I'm a cat, but everybody knows your rhymes are crap. I knew today that I was that. By God, did I give you a big slap? So put your freaking face in my little box. Cause I'll shit on your face and knock off your socks. I eat you up like bagels and knocks. I pawn you so hard, I knock off your cock. So put your Bible down and don't do what it takes. Cause that's not gonna help you anyway. Jesus loves me and he thinks you're gay. Worship CC, I'm the only way. Yeah. Yeah. Now G-Man's about to light this place up. About to expose this little phony little cat. You huh. know what's up. I don't know what you're talking about. He's a cat. Christians don't curse. And those who know God don't do that either. So listen up. Listen up, pervert. Just get out of my way. I'll beat you down, then get you neutered in spade. I take your little paws and rip them to pieces. I grind your little box and then feed you to feces. You rap like TJ and you look like Lucy. I stomp you like Hoagie because you fight like a pussy. You look your butt hurt yet? Because I'm just getting started. You beating me? You must be retarded. Stop barking like a dog and purr like a cat. Still a honey lost and you know it's a fact. You're the chosen cat? Then I'm Richard Dawkins. I break your legs and leave you like Hawkins. You lost this battle? So don't battle me again. My name is G-Man and I always win. Your rapping skill was a total joke. Here's TJ Banana, go eat it and choke. Oh! Oh shit. That's, that Fuck was actually it. pretty Fuck good, G-Man. Fuck it! Fuck it! <laughs> Whoa, G-Man, stop cussing. 
70% of the voters in the audience claimed CC won in the end, but G-Man knew he was the true winner, and that the voting booths were probably rigged by creationist cat's human slave, the Deem. Episode 123, the peasants would read some weird-ass ads from Craigslist, which officially got a segment intro on episode 145. Crazy Craigslist ads! Yeah, that's it, baby. Oh, yeah. Many hilarious ads were read on this segment. We asked, and 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 you sent it to us. We have some weird <laughs> Craigslist shit. Uh, there, there's some really fucking weird shit. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're just trolls or not, but no. you know, they're not. They're, they're, we're just going to assume no. Oh, I don't know. There's, there's people that do troll Craigslist, but we're, we're going to assume no. Yes, we're going to. Okay. Assume. They're all real. So uh, if it's troll or not a troll, we're saying not a troll. This one's very straightforward here. Come to my dark porch and let me suck you off. Uh, Mail for yeah. mail, 39 in Marshalltown. Marshalltown. Hosting Marshall tonight. Town. Come anonymous oh if you my. want. Can be dark and discreet. I blow you and you leave. What if I want to stick and around? I blow you and you leave. Lights, lights will be off. No talking. Under 25 and disease free only. You say no talking. No talk. Yeah, how I have, I have. have. How are you even going to ascertain this stuff from them with no talking? It's like the guy's like, you know, I can imagine this a guy trying to go up there. This honor system. This person's a hopeless romantic. Dude, I can imagine some guy going up there. I I have, oh yeah, you have an erection. Don't talk anymore. I'm sorry. I didn't finish. I'm sorry. I wanted to say I have AIDS. I'm sorry about that. Well, bye. I wonder about, you know, like, there, this is no, like, this doesn't seem like it's anyone's, like, actual, like, fantasy. This is just like, this is what I can get, <coughs> basically. They must do this a lot because it's posted 15 days ago, updated three hours ago. Do you see a spelling error or something? <laughs> You know, he added the no talking clause. Oh, the last, nice. the <laughs> last guy was a real chatterbox, you know. So annoying. He was like, what's your name? Nah, well, don't ask me these kind of like, things. You just went up to that guy's house for some other purpose, like trying to deliver a package, or like, you know, you're like, we're trying to get people to sign up for this political action group or something. This guy just, like, just walks over, okay. Like, well, what are you doing, man? <laughs> hey, I said no talking. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Sit Shut back. up and just enjoy the moment. Just enjoy your fucking <laughs> blowjob and then leave. <laughs> The segment would disappear for some time to be revitalized in a later era of the drunken peasants. A divisive moment in the podcast history that you'll just have to wait and hear about later. <laughs> as another antagonist to the show must be discussed, as after the Craigslist ad segment began, a new villain was among us. The atheist community was under attack from within as a mutant kangaroo man began attacking popular atheists. Atheism is Unstoppable, or Devin Tracy, would come to the front and center of almost every YouTube atheist shit list. His siege began when he attacked Jacqueline Glenn, and Jacqueline came on to episode 125 to defend herself against this animal. Listen to how black people are regularly treated by the police. Well, 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 Jacqueline Glenn so, has decided to be attacked by a kangaroo. Um, uh huh. With a Nirvana shirt, though. I'm pretty sure, like, you've almost hit that point, TJ. I've almost hit the point where I'm a kangaroo in a Nirvana shirt? No, no, we're like, you, you turned the video off, like you said. Nope, not quite yet. No, I, I, no, I, I didn't say now. I said I'm pretty sure this is the point where you're like, what the fuck? I didn't even care. I was just like, I accepted it. Oh, okay. Kangaroo in a Nirvana shirt. It's all good. Oh, well, that's kind of strange, but okay. Devin responded to the peasants for calling him a racist for daring to say black people committed more crimes. Vadim and Rue would go back and forth for months, with Vadim being dock-dropped. The peasants would interview Vadim on episode 127. The reason you came to our attention is because of an angry kangaroo was talking about you. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> you know, I was basically just kind of set to go fishing this weekend, and then all of a sudden, uh, I get on Twitter just to check what's going on with CC, and I see my name is being splashed all over the place by this guy that's like, I don't know, I, I honestly had never really seen this guy before. I think maybe I'd seen him in thumbnails and stuff, but never actually watched any of these videos. And I was like, wow, I can't believe that this guy is mistaking me for Creationist Cat, because... The thing is, we look nothing alike. <laughs> no, not at all. Not even a little. No, no, no resemblance. I mean, like, first of all, you're a human and he's a cat. You think, I mean, maybe kangaroos don't really have good species, you know, recognition or something. 
That's like yeah. fit. And I have to say, it's pretty pathetic that someone would make a uh, you know a, a YouTube account and like talk through an animal like that. I mean, uh, I just think that I don't know. I mean, I, <laughs> Kind of really desperate. Yeah. What's like, what's the psychological you know? profile of, of someone who there. would do that? Yeah, I think that's yeah, you know. I, know. I mean, it's, I, mean it's I thought like, he was I I thought he was really a kangaroo, so I'm kind of lost here. Devin, as he began his tirade against his detractors, would release private information on them online, eventually leading to his ban from Twitter in 2016, which TJ would divide fans as he defended Devin against Twitter's terms of service in favor of freedom of speech. Fans were also upset that behind the scenes, TJ had made a truce with Devin and apologized for calling him a racist. Thus, AIU wouldn't be covered much on DP besides a joke here and there. It wouldn't be until Devin's meltdowns on his short-lived podcast, The Flying Monkey Podcast, that the peasants would cover him again and TJ's opinion would seem to change on AIU. And who fucking cares, bro? I'm against Hillary and Trump. I'm fucking. I'm not against I'm Hillary. Be I'm not American. I'm not American. Say your name. I'm no, not. No, that's the thing. Yeah. Why? What's, what's the name dropping me? I don't have nothing to do with because this shit. Because you. Because you don't care. I don't. Because you didn't line up behind Hillary to sniff her fucking crotchless oh, panties. Oh, Hillary. Oh, you're the best we could do, I guess. Oh, let me lick that fucking pussy, bitch. After Stevie's visit, TJ and TJ's brother's brother. The Vigilant Christian finally came on for his debate on episode 148. It only took him almost 100 episodes to suck it up and come on about a year later. The Vigilant Christian needed some lessons, obviously, from G-Man, as his debating tactics mainly consisted of saying, these are just my world views. Yeah, so, um, well, first of all, you have to understand that I'm coming from my perspective and my worldview. Yeah, right. Well, but again, I... I'm just sharing my perspective here. Jim A would come on the show to accuse Mario of being Illuminati. Jim, Jim are you A. There, buddy? Jim A. I'm, Jim I'm A. Here. Here. Yeah, so, so Mar yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Mario's here. What do what'd you want to ask him? Yes, I have a bone to pick with the village and Christian here. <laughs> yeah, what's that? Uh, Mario? <laughs> I feel, you know, I've watched a lot of your videos and your Illuminati stuff here. I feel you're a part of the Illuminati. You're, you're throwing a diversion. You're throwing a curveball to all of us. You know what I feel? I feel you're the Kaiser Sotse of the Illuminati. You know, when you walk around, I'm sure you walk around with a cane and a limp, you know, like Kevin Spacey does in The Usual Suspects. That's you. You know, I, that, that's how I feel. Okay. We're, we're expressing our beliefs here. <laughs> yeah, so. The peasants would attempt to convert Mario to Evanism as well, and Paul's ego joined. The vigilant Christian didn't seem to very much like Paul's ego, and had to put up with him again on his return to the show on episode 150, which also had Vegan Gaines as a guest, a crazy-ass vegan who wanted to kill Mr. Repsion. The vigilant Christian didn't want to ever be on a show again with Paul's ego, which I guess wouldn't be a problem as Paul was only a guest every once in a while. But... The age of classical peasantism was coming to an end. The show was about to go through a major change on the next episode, and thus mark the beginning of the salt crisis. Hit it, Ben! Oh, Canada, you fucking piece of shit. Oh, America Oh Canada Wolverine is the only cool thing to come out of you and he's a fictional character <laughs> Oh Canada Justin Bieber came from you Just want to say again that you're a piece of shit. Fuck yourselves in your stupid Canuck asses, your insipid morons. Cut it, Ben. <laughs> He's like, I'm done with it. I'm done with it. It's, it's now ending. Fuck you, Canada. Happy Canada Day, bitches.